y'all welcome back to another episode of the high tea honey podcast my name is shante and i'm here with the melodic voice on the ones and twos hi everybody it's nika hey nika hi how you doing i'm good i'm tired tired i feel tired too so shout out to us for showing up in the space even though we're tired yes what are we talking about today What's our topic? Tell the people what our topic is. Today we are discussing. Let me actually read it because I want to make sure I get this topic correct. The topic for today is overcoming the pattern of chaos. Wow. It's giving powerful because, oh, wow. That's what I'm working on in my life right now, overcoming the pattern. I'm really working on that, like, to the point of grief. That's a part of the process. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's the topic for today. I'm excited to talk about it. I'm excited to share some of the things that I'm overcoming. Um, we probably should put, like, a, a sensory advisory. <laughs> Oh. And notice across the top. Just because, you know, depending on who listening, you know, they might be you someone like a trigger warning. Touched or offended or whatever. Oh well go ahead. Do you want to put it on the screen or do you want to say it out right now? Trigger warning. Well what are the warnings? You might not like what I have to say. All right. <laughs> you you've been alerted. You might not like what she has to say. I feel like that's only specific people. Overall, please tune in and listen to the whole episode because I think a lot of you actually will like to hear what we have to say today. But for some people, individuals, it might, might be a little it. touchy. Yeah. I'm okay with that, though. Good. Okay. But before we jump into our topic, we are going to discuss our favorite part of the show called The Sip. Sippy, sippy, sippy. So, the sip is a part of the show where we discuss books that we're reading, music we're listening to, fun activities that we're participating in, things that are cultivating wellness in our life, all of those good things that we like to share with y'all before we jump into our topic. So, Shante, do you want to kick us off with your sip? Yeah, girl, let me, let me go ahead kick us off here me. <laughs> So I am sipping some golden milk ginger chai. Hold on, I gotta say it all together correctly. Golden milk ginger chai. There we go. It's really good. It's like an anti-inflammatory blend. So mm -hmm. like that combination of the ginger with the turmeric um, and then, you know, all of the chai herbs and stuff is really good. I'm enjoying it. Cheers. Cheers to good health. Chai latte with a little honey in it. I would, oh. I'm not saying I don't like chai. Because I think I do. I just don't drink it enough to be like, oh, I want like a chai tea. The first time I had it, like, I really fell in love. It's very soothing and very comforting for me. And I don't know, I think I like the robustness of it because it, it packs a lot of flavor. But mm -hmm. at the same time, it's still very calming. That's why I like chai. Yeah. I've just been drinking herbal tea, but I'm not drinking anything today. So I'm not actually sipping on anything. Dry mouth. Mm -mm. <laughs> Uh, what else? So shows that I am watching, um, I actually just watched the most recent episode of BM BMF season two. Girl, like it was so much stuff going. On. <laughs> I really, I really enjoy that show. I really do. I only been seeing like the little, I guess like little snippets of people taking little certain scenes out. On Twitter and people been just like ripping them shreds. It, it drama out, but yeah. very entertaining. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm watching BMF. Um, what else? You watching Bel Air? Mm -hmm. 
Um, we got to start watching Unprisoned with Carrie Washington and Delray. What else? We watching anything else? Well, are you watching anything? I actually am rewatching a couple of episodes, a couple of series. I'm rewatching Married to Medicine. I am rewatching Lovecraft Country. I am rewatching Underground. Um, and then I don't know, like when it comes to like movies and stuff, I could watch the same movies over and over and over again. The motherfuckers do not get over to me. <laughs> it it just don't. Like they just don't. So last night I think I was watching Deja Vu with Denzel Washington. The other night I think I watched um uh shit house party like it just oh did the new house party come out yet or is it out yet I think it's out but I wouldn't know if it's about because I'm not interested in watching it. I'm gonna watch it just because I want to see how they. You know, made it anew, but, you know, I don't really have hopes or goals or whatever. I'm going to just let it be what it is and try not to, you know, be too critiquey because I'm the type of person that, you know, I think if something is done well the first time, like sometimes when y'all come back and do it, it just kind of dilutes the intention. And I don't like that. Not to say that I feel like that's what they're doing with this. I don't know. I haven't seen it yet, but I don't know. I don't have any comments. <laughs> All right, moving on. What else? Um, books that we're reading. Um, right now I'm listening to on audiobook. Y'all know I love an audiobook. Um, adult children of emotionally immature parents, and wow, reading me like a book. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm about. I would say halfway through, so I got some more to do. I don't really have a lot to say on it yet, except for a while. Yeah, I finished listening to it like two weeks ago, and I still had some leftover time on it, so I was trying to use the rest of the time to listen to it. And <sighs> that's why my voice feels heavy, because mm -hmm. of the unfolding of that um, book just that I think she is she a psychiatrist or a psychologist um I don't remember I know she definitely works with children though um and her name is Lindsay and she's done a lot of case studies over the years and that book is is very heavy it also uh within that book makes me think about who I am mm -hmm. as a parent Mm -hmm. and like how I am in some ways emotionally immature when it comes to me raising my child and like where that stem from and where that come from and how I need to like clean that up before my child get too far gone so like it's a really good read but it's a heavy read um it took me almost like eight days to like listen to it because I had to keep listening and stopping it listen and stop it listen yeah. and stop it listen and stop that's it. where I am with it right now like I had to take a few days off um after the last chapter that I listened to like I just need a little space to kind of process that because it is a lot yeah the book I'm about to start reading now is also by Dr. Lindsay and that one is called self-care for adult children with emotionally immature parents and so basically it kind of teaches you well from what I read from the little excerpt it's going to teach you how to care for yourself if you do decide that you want to continue a relationship with those parents and it's going to teach you how to take care of yourself if you decide that these relationships are too much and you need to um dissolve those relationships in any kind of way so yeah then I need to read something a little more lighthearted too because child that shit been taking me down yeah for lighthearted stuff I've been watching um Keenan and Kel I've been watching the Jamie Foxx show yo Jamie Foxx 
I've always appreciated him because he's so talented, but he's so funny. Like, yeah. I've been cracking up. Yeah. I like, I like the Jamie Foxx show. I love, I love all the old school shows. Yeah. It's something nostalgic about it, but for me, it's also something comforting. And then, I don't know, in a way, it's like connecting with little me. Because, like, little Shantae used to watch these shows. So, mm-hmm. it's like, I'm watching them now. And though I don't remember all of the jokes, I'm still laughing. So, it's like, girl, you've been on to something. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> all right. So, some of the recent activities that we've done. Girl, what we've been doing? So, we went to a concert. And that was really fun. We went to go see Dory. Oh my gosh. Duran Bernard. I want to say his name. Okay. Put some respect on his name. Put some respect on his name. <laughs> okay. Um, that concert was really fun. Um, I've been brunching with some, some friends. That's been nice. Yes. And then just most recently, we were celebrating a friend's birthday. Yes, yes. And they're like family. Yes, um, yes. We had a really good time. It was like, for me, it was a three-day event because she came to get her hair done with me. So we was wilding out that day. And then I saw her for two days after that. So, like, it was like a three-day event for me of us just being in each other's presence and, like, enjoying each other's space and celebrating her new life as she gets to orbit around the sun again today. Shout out to you, Tamaya. Happy birthday, Happy girl. birthday, Tamaya. <laughs> Yeah. Any more activities? Any more activities? Uh, I went out with my two best friends from college recently, and we beat the escape room, y'all. Woo! From what I hear, that's you know people be going a few times and they don't make it out, but mm-hmm. we made it out. So shout out to us. <laughs> I'm if me and my best friends did that, would we make it out? Maybe. I mean, I ain't gonna lie. At points we was in there looking like I was like, yo, what in the world? <laughs> but. Mm-hmm. You know, we figured it out. I'm going to reach out to them and see if they would want to do that since I'm going home in a couple of weeks. That could be fun. Yeah. That could be fun. And music, I'm just listening to the same old shit I've been listening to. Yeah. It's been giving, like, shuffle and, like, going through playlists. I've been adding a few new things. Like, what's the girl name? Um, I think her name is Karina, but it's the song. It's called Lucky Girl. I'm a lucky girl, lucky girl. I like that song, so I've been kind of listening to that, or it's been in my head the last couple of days. I ain't heard that. I actually used it uh, for one of our posts on social media. Y'all go follow us on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, YouTube at Hi T Honey. Please and thank you. Okay, it's right here on the screen. And it, okay. All right. Okay. Now look now. All right. You know. All right. Thank you. But I ain't gonna lie. The one person that I have started listening to just like in the last two days is Lola Brooke. Mm-hmm. I really like her. She remind me of me, just a New York version. Mm-hmm. So she a little bit more rough around the edges, but. I mean, Duval I, County a little rough, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know what you're saying, but. Oh, Jesus. Dude. Jesus. It's just wow. Well, my city is now uh, the murder capital again. I'm just like, y'all, y'all don't want to aspire to be nothing else. Well, I'm glad we ain't shit because we was for a while. But, you know, it's it's a lot of pain everywhere. And yeah. People are going through a lot right now. Yeah. It's just a lot going on. And I think because of I am, like, moving towards my more humanitarian uh, North Node. North Node is in your birth chart. Go listen to our natal series. Our natal chart series, the astrology series. Um, But within my birth chart, my North Node is in Aquarius. And Aquarius is like the humanitarian. And like my little soul just been hurting for humanity because it's just a lot going on. It's a lot going on. And Trying to keep a clear mind about it. and I don't even want to say remain hopeful because I don't really like that. I would say remain faithful Mm -hmm. about humanity and where humanity is going and what humanity has the capacity to do. Um, But my little soul is just so heavy. Yeah. But that's our sip, child. 
That's what we've been sipping on. Please tell us what y'all been sipping on. We love to know any books, music, TV shows, movies, activities, anything y'all doing. We want to know. Shoot, expand our perspective. Put me on. <laughs> put us on. Put us on. Yes, indeed. All right, baby. Well, you ready to uh, overcome these patterns of chaos? Yes, Lord. Oh. <laughs> Don't we sound weird? <laughs> God, Lee. We right. huffing and puffing to our Lord. <laughs> Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Sometimes that's all you can say. Sometimes all I can say is <sighs> take a deep breath. Shit. Seriously. Okay. All right. Again. The topic for today is overcoming the patterns of chaos. And how we came up with this topic? Um, so you know what? Cause I had to think about where it really came from. It came from I was listening to on audiobook, as I always do. Um, I was listening to What Happened to You mm -hmm. um by Oprah Winfrey and Bruce Perry. We'll leave that book link down in the description. Yes. Um, so I was listening to that and at a certain part, I think in like chapter six, they were talking about basically chaos and like how even though it's not ideal because it's what's familiar, we kind of gravitate towards it. Because mm -hmm. um, Oprah gave the example of some of the girls that went to her school, um, you know, how basically they had a culture shock in like shifting from their known environment to something that a lot of people would see as a step up. Because it's like, you know, a lot of them had to share everything. Like, it's like five of them living in a bed at home, sleeping in a bed at home. And then you come to this school and, like, you have your own space. And, like, from the outside looking in, everybody's like, oh, it's a come up. Like, you have access to so much more stuff than you used to have. Mm -hmm. But because that's unfamiliar, it feels so foreign. And, it, like, it takes time to, like you know, really get acclimated to something new, your instinct is always going to be towards what you've already known. Yeah. Um. So I was like, oh, that would be something great for us to talk about because that's the work that we are doing like yes. right now in our lives, like overcoming old patterns and making new choices. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Y'all just going to hit me doing a lot of sighing. If that's what you need to do to take care of yourself, sigh away, my baby, for oh, real. Because yeah. it's real. It's real. So, a little description about the topic that Baby wrote, which I think is very thoughtful of you. It says, we tend to gravitate towards what's familiar. Familial. Is that familiar? Familiar. Why do people say familial? I mean, that is a word. That means like family. Oh, so, familiar. Is familiar. Mm -hmm. If the familiar is un unhealthy and destructive. Well, it's supposed to say even if. That's a missed word on my part. But, you know, even, even if, if mm -hmm. it is unhealthy and destructive. I can agree <laughs> with this shit 1000% because I catch myself doing it all the time. All the time. I think we become accustomed to what we were raised with. Because when you really think about it, like, what is childhood? Childhood is a conditioning period. Mm -hmm. Your parents, you know, teach you things. And we, being out in life and in the world, y'all, I realized that everybody's parents teach them something different. Like, we are not all getting the same stuff, you know? Um, and a lot of times, it's hard to even recognize that something is dysfunctional or something is harmful because that's all you know. And it's like, sometimes it takes a minute for that to like really click for you in that way. Like, mm, this is a, a, a habit or a tendency or a tradition that my family has, but this shit does not work for me. Yeah, it does. I would say one of, I could say one of my dysfunctional or unhealthy, um, chaotic patterns is, is like, when something is not going my way, like, I go to anger. Mm -hmm. Like, I get, like, 
angry. Like, and sometimes that anger is directed towards me, myself, and then other times it is directed out for me. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I'm like yelling and fussing and talking shit and shutting people out and like just having like a whole fucking meltdown. And when I think about, you know, my childhood and stuff, like, coming up like those were you know the unhealthy chaotic patterns that existed you know in my household you know like I used to see my parents like argue then they would try to hide it from us but like you could feel the tension in the air and then one day it just boil out and they just going at it then me and my siblings we would fight with each other like we didn't we didn't know healthy you know, resolution either. So we would fight each other, argue with each other, go off on each other, be ugly to each other. You know, um, you know, I saw, you know, other family members, you know, do the same thing. Like, and it was just a very chaotic thing. And then I, I never saw real resolution. Mm-hmm. Um, so when I became an adult and then I started cultivating my own relationships with people, whether they were uh, platonic, um, or romantic if something just did not go my way oh my god I think I could go up in a I can go up in flames in a fucking second I can go up in flames in a second yeah and it is it's very destructive it is very deadly to what I really want which is connection and love and care and safety but even I am willing to destroy that thing, you know, that I really, really want because of that pattern. Yes. So, like, being able to have the awareness now, and I would say having the awareness, maybe, I would say in maybe the last three years, but then, like, really, really putting it into, like, actual practice maybe in the last two years has been helpful, but it don't make it less challenging. Yeah. I mean... I would say in some ways it probably makes it more challenging because now you actually have to like step up and do the work, you know, before just kind of operating in that space. Like you could see that you were having challenges, Mm -hmm. but, you know, maybe the connection between that and, you know, the behavior um, or even your past environments wasn't as apparent. So it's like now that you have this information in front of you. What are you going to do with it? So then you actually do have to do the work and like make the choice. <clears throat> I love the way that you said that, um, because I think I um, had similar experiences, but they kind of just showed up in a different way. So like similar experiences in the sense of like, I didn't really learn like healthy resolution or like how to, you know, close the loop on things. Mm-hmm. Um, so where you had the anger and you would like go from like, you know, zero to a hundred very quickly. I would shut down mm-hmm. and just fold into myself because it's almost like, well, nobody wants to fight this fight. So why should I fight this fight? Like of trying to like get to conclusion and get to finality and like really talk about like what's going on and what's happening. Mm-hmm. growing up for me that wasn't the case it was very much so you know shut that down feelings are too much keep that to yourself mm-hmm. do not bring that to me so then you know that was my response to shut down and I could see how you know that was a behavior that I wasn't really mindful of but it definitely stayed with me you mm-hmm. know and so now it's like okay like now that I'm aware this is what I'm doing yeah Mm-hmm. this healing journey <laughs> I will say that um, you know it is helpful being in relationship being in friendship with somebody who can really understand that mm-hmm. and like see like okay this is what you're doing because I am also doing the same thing because uh, the, the healing journey I'm sure a lot of people have heard this before you know can be kind of lonely or can feel lonely at certain times yeah. and I think that's simply because You know, sometimes you are the only one that you know that's kind of doing this thing. But if you stay true to your path, the path that feels good to you, you will find and attract people to you who can, 
you know, love you and support you do through it. Yeah, no, you really can. And that don't mean that we don't trigger each other and we don't set each other off because we do. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think now because we have those awarenesses, it is, um, even more essential and even more important that we really do like challenge ourselves to remember the true intentions of why we came together anyways, to push through those chaotic patterns that we both have and like come to the table and be like, this is triggering me or this is bothering me and is making me respond to you in this way. And I don't want to respond to that. So like, th let's, ha let's figure out how to work through that and let's like, bring both of us up in it because I go off, she shut down. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just how it is. And I feel bad when she shut down. And do you feel some type of way when I be mad? It depends. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, sometimes I do, but sometimes I am able to see like, okay, that's her and her stuff and mm -hmm. I don't have to like make myself be responsible for why you feel that way in this situation mm -hmm. um so it really does depend yeah and that leads into this um particular uh I don't even know what this would be called this statement and it's why do we experience chaos and the biggest reason why we experience chaos is because we think that it's an external experience happening to us when it's really our internal ideas about what's happening. And we want order and we want simplicity. And when that gets interrupted in any way, we begin to feel overwhelmed. We start to feel frustrated. We feel like there's disorder. We get anxious. We start to feel stress. And then we start blaming and lashing out on other people. But it's our ideals about how we feel like situations or how things should be going. And when that's interrupted in any kind of way, it sets us off in those chaotic patterns that we learn. So mine will be anger. In distance. Mm -hmm. And then yours would be? Distance and repression. Like really repressing myself and my feelings. Feeling like, well, I'm not allowed to say what I need to say or what I want to say. Or I should. Just whatever. It's so many stories. I can't even get into all of them. Yeah, yeah. And, and those stories are the ideas. Mm -hmm. It's like these ideas of black things should be this. Mm -hmm. but like nobody don't know that mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and I think that that is one of the things that we really try to challenge ourselves on is really sharing what's happening in our mind because I have a child I'm going to make up some shit in the middle <laughs> I should be a writer you should be I am very creative y'all look out for Nika's book it will be coming at some point I don't know when but I'm saying it out loud now because yes ma'am okay yeah yeah, and that stress and that anxiety, you know, that you feel when things start to become disorderly or, like, not based on how you imagine things going, when that stress and that anxiety start to rev up, you start to have those experiences where you want to run away or you want to shut down or you want to lash out or you want to be angry and yell and fuss and cuss and all of that stuff and those are those actions are the things that continue to perpetuate the chaotic behavior exactly and I think what's even worse than it the chaotic behavior itself is not having the awareness that it is chaotic behavior oh my gosh yes yes because sometimes when you live in a certain level of dysfunction for so long, you don't even realize that it's dysfunction. And to some extent, I mean, I do think that, you know, if you were to ask generally people what they felt like dysfunction was, there might be some type of general consensus. But I also believe that dysfunction is subjective too, because, mm -hmm. you know, what might be too much or too dysfunctional for me like people might be thriving in that environment like I don't know I just know it's not for me <laughs> yeah and vice versa you know yeah I feel the same way like 
I do think about certain levels of dysfunction that I can live with um, versus certain levels of dysfunction that I can't live with. And then I even try to challenge that because I know deep down in my heart, I don't want to live with none of that shit. Yeah. And that's not to say that any of it isn't going to come up. But if it, if and when it does come up, what I aspire for myself is to be able to manage that with an open heart. Mm -hmm. And not fall back into those patterns of the types of reactiveness that I have had in the past that has left me stumped and stuck and not able to resolve within myself, but also with the person that I care about or the person that I love. Yeah. We do have some um, solutions. That could be really helpful that I'm actually planning on implementing into my own life. That could be helpful for people to like really be able to overcome like patterns of chaos because sometimes you cannot overcome without like some type of guidance. Like sometimes you could try to be putting shit together, mm -hmm. but the uh, but the, the likelihood of you falling back into those patterns are very, very high. Yeah. I mean, it's really just about, I think, resources and support. Because, like, if you have a child and that child like, oh, I want to be a basketball star. Like, they could potentially, you know, be really good just naturally on their own playing basketball. Mm -hmm. But, you know, to really help them reach that goal... They're going to need coaches. They're going to need to be on different teams. They're going to need practices. They're going to need training and conditioning. Like, And when it comes to certain things, people have no problem throwing support or like seeking support for certain things. But mm -hmm. it seems like when it's more like emotional things, or I would say things that, you know, are more vulnerable, which is like your inner thoughts and feelings, you know, people just like, oh, I got to deal with it on my own. And it's like, I mean, you can, not to say you can't. But there are things out there that you can be doing. There are people that you could be connecting with to like really help support you in reaching whatever your goal is. Yeah, and not, not feeling that fear about it either. You know, like, this is something that I struggle with and this is something that I'm seeing is coming up in my life over and over and over and over and over again. And I don't know how to not be this way. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to get out of this chaotic cycle. Help me. Yeah. I mean, and there are people who can help. Mm -hmm. So you want to read the first way to overcome? So uh, one of the ways that you can overcome chaos is let go of those ideas. Um, the ideas that are causing your pain and your struggle. Notice when you are resisting. Um, some of the ways you might be able to tell is like if you feel anxious, if you feel frustrated, if you feel stressed, if you feel burned out, like that is your body's way of letting you know something is not right. So it's about, you know, being clear what you are thinking about and like what ideas are really kind of guiding you in your day to day behavior. Yeah. That's a good one. The number two point is to breathe and recenter. Like, take a minute, just take take your breath in and observe that chaos and be like, hmm, before I respond, let me just, like, witness this. Don't let me get swept up in the vortex with this chaos. Like, let me just take a step back for just a second and decide how I want to interact with this thing. Mm-hmm. That's why I need to learn how to go from zero to, like, five miles an hour versus, like, zero to 100 miles. Because I'm on one end or the other end, and I don't really have no middle ground. And I wouldn't even, and, if I, would, and I would use this just for a lack of a better term or the other, the other way of kind of explaining it. If I do land in middle ground, it's still chaotic because that middle ground is like suppression and distance. Because mm -hmm. I'm not going to address it because I don't want to be lashing out. Mm -hmm. I don't want to change my mind about how I feel about it. So I'm just going to overlook the shit and just be mad on the inside. 
which still seeps into the outside world, you know, even if you're not always intended for it to be that and way. And then at that point, you're just really punishing yourself. Mm-hmm. Because you don't want to let go of the idea. You don't want to address the thing that's happening. And you don't want to address it in a way that can cause more chaos. Mm-hmm. So you just like, well, fuck it. I'll just deal with it on my own inside. But it's really hurting you because with that, you start to feel that anxiety. You feel that stress. You feel that overwhelm. You feel that frustration. And that shit got to go somewhere at some point. Ooh. And when you, when you pull it inside, you get into the organs. And then you start having headaches and your back high hurting. blood pressure, mm. strokes, diabetes. Like, for real, y'all. <laughs> it's that serious. Fibromyalgia. G- GI tract issues. Crohn's disease. Lupus. Chronic disease. Autoimmune illness. Literally. And that's all of that. And that's when you suppress it because when you are acting it out you don't really and and the thing with anger is there are two types of healthy anger there is healthy anger and there is dysfunctional anger and the thing is most of us operate in dysfunctional anger i think just the whole idea of anger like people have for so long labeled anger as a bad thing Mm -hmm. So, you know, it really does cause a lot of us to learn to go against ourselves because anger is a natural emotion. It's as natural as happiness and every other quote unquote good feeling or emotion that we want to have and experience. Yeah. But because, you know, you have been taught that, oh, it's wrong or it's bad. Then like when you feel it, here comes the guilt and the shame and then the wanting to hide and suppress and all of that stuff. But that's not real. The reality mm-hmm. is you are angry. Yeah. And so it is about learning healthy ways to express that anger mm-hmm. so that anger doesn't linger. Because people still mad about stuff that happened 30 years ago. Me? Like, okay, amen. You know? I am people. <laughs> and, you know, sometimes we don't even recognize because, you know, everything is done in the shadows and everything is hidden. We don't even recognize how significant something that happened 30 years ago is like how present that is for us right Right now now. in this moment. But because we got to save face and have a cute story to tell, it's just like, oh, whatever. I don't care. Yes, you do. You do. Yeah. You may not be able to say you do, but you do. And it's impacting you in the way that you operate now. Yeah. So that number two point of literally just like breathing and recentering Take a moment to pause before you jump into the disorderliness, the chaos, the dysfunction, the destruction. Before you jump in head first and like act out in the way that you always have, just take a minute and pause. That pause is powerful. It really can be because it gives you space to really in the present moment make a choice. Versus already having your choice be made made for you. Like, oh, I was mad at them. I got to stay mad at them forever and ever and ever and ever. I am to stay mad at them forever. I mean, and sometimes, hey, it works out. And sometimes it can become dysfunctional and be very disruptive. It is dysfunctional because I can see where that has spilled over into other things in my life that I don't even have a fucking problem with. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I'm working on it, y'all. Truly. And it is not, it is not easy. It's not. Because the other thing for me is, it's like, I know I'm punishing myself now that I have that awareness. But then the other part of myself be like, yeah. And if you, like, let it go then that mean they got away with this shit. And it's just, it, it, that'd be the thing that would make me hold on a little longer with the pinky. I'm like, nah, fuck that. I'm holding on a little longer. But they, they don't fucking know. It don't. You know? And I really have, like, I would say maybe, like, in the last maybe four years, really have pushed myself to, like, have those challenging conversations with, and it's, these are with people that I give a fuck about. I don't be arguing with motherfuckers that I don't care about. Yeah. I be looking at them. 
I don't even know you. Like, <laughs> it's really about people that I love and people that I care about. Um, and people that really have had the opportunity to like really get into my heart space. Like I really have been challenging myself to like have those conversations and say these things upset me and these things bother me and these things hurt me. And sometimes it is a yelling, but most of the time I really do my best to try to talk it through without trying to be the judge the jury and the prosecutor and the executioner because I recognize that I can be all the motherfuckers. Like, we want to take you down, especially when I feel slighted or I feel like a situation is not working out the way that I pictured it in my mind. Mm -hmm. Without me being able to recognize like that, you never shared that idea with that person. So you really taking it you really taking it out on yourself because they being themselves mm -hmm. and they're acting the way that they would normally act and you don't like the way that they acting because you feel like they should be acting or be doing or be speaking in a particular way. So yeah, that breathing, that pausing mm -hmm. is essential. Yes. Perfect word. Um Number three is about coming back to the present moment. Um, you know, sometimes we do have old grievances that we holding on, that we haven't expressed to others, and we have not even really truly admitted it to ourselves, but the feeling is there. So it is about coming back to the present moment, um, seeing the beauty and perfection in the moment that is in front of you, opening your mind and your heart just a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm saying mm -mm, because that is where I am right now. Mm -hmm. I'm in the I'm in the real practice of the number three. Like the first two, I have been able to kind of like be like, all right, Nika. So like, these people don't know what you're thinking. Mm -hmm. You just feel like people should be acting or doing a particular thing. For whatever reason, and that might not be conducive to who they are and the way that they experience life at X, Y, and Z. And then the other thing that I've really been putting into practice is the pause. Now I'm at that place where it's like, hey girl, open up your heart just a little bit. I'm working on it. That's all you can do. That that is all you can do. It's work on it. Yeah. It be feeling like. And I ain't gonna lie, like, especially like in the past couple of weeks, like just really trying to challenge myself to open my heart more to like seeing the beauty of an experience is really hard for, hard, like, hard for me because it feels like once that door like kind of crack open, like I'm just going to shatter into a thousand pieces. And that's probably exactly what you need to do, to be I honest. I don't know, probably. I mean... Sometimes you do have to shatter because it's like if 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 the you is all of these old behaviors and all of these chaotic patterns and all of this, you know, stuff that does not serve who you are right now, you probably do have to shatter that much. You know, you, it has to break in order mm -hmm. for something new to be true. Yeah. But I mean, you know, that don't I, feel good. I understand that. Figuratively. Yeah, I'm about to say that don't feel good. That don't make you want to sign up for that. Like, oh yeah, I'm ready to fall apart. Like, that's not real. Hell but it no. is real. You know what I'm saying? It's real that it needs to happen, but you're not gonna be excited about it. Hell no. So, you know, the choice is what do you want more? Do you wanna be I can't even say comfortable because like the present is uncomfortable. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? The old behaviors are uncomfortable. So it's like you are either choosing that or you are choosing being uncomfortable to have something new. Yeah. Either way. And it's not like I ain't done this over and over and over mm -hmm. and over again. But the place of my life that I'm in now is really doing, like, that emotional healing. Because, mm -hmm. like, I've done, like, 
the physical thing where I've like been able to put myself into a new situation, that mental thing where I've been able to like mentally change my mind about the way that I experience myself and what I need to do in order to cultivate stability and love and you know all of these grand experiences that I am having now. The work that I'm doing is emotional and spiritual. And after I had that damn Reiki session, when she told me I was all locked up in my heart chakra, that shit hurt my feelings. Oh. <laughs> that shit made me cry. Because I was like, oh, damn. She was like, yeah, you real, this area, you are compressed. And you real, real tight. And she was like, but when I see you, when I look at you in your eyes, I just see so much love and so much care and so much compassion and so much gentleness and so much softness. She was like, but your heart is locked down. And she was like, you're going to have to move that energy because if you don't, it's going to turn into some other. And then I'm like, bitch, I can't be having no heart attack. I got a family. Yes, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> For real, because no ma'am. So opening my heart up and like softening and like I would say I, I always say I'm more like code like <laughs> melting away some of the ice mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> I would say melting it's like an iceberg melting away some of that ice you know to be flow more like water mm -hmm. than be hard rigid very mm -hmm. very rigid in my emotions it's yeah. For real. <laughs> and I deep down I don't want to be that way. But it is a it's a defense mechanism and then that come and then when somebody pushes that or challenges that, it comes out in me lashing now at this like I could act real stank, like I could be ugly, I could isolate, I could distance, I could do all of those things to protect. That more gentle, more soft, more vulnerable, more loving part of myself, you know, to not be hurt like that. And within that, what I'm learning about my emotional healing is that all this shit stems from childbirth mm -hmm. and understanding like how I was conceived and the manner in which I was conceived and how I came into this earth. And like when I came into this earth, the mother that took care of me, like those things like I'm living that out emotionally right now and that shit is painful and it hurts and it is very chaotic and I'm doing that work by myself mm -hmm.